Hey cats, Ed Budd here. Today I've got for you my top five running shoe pickups in 2021 so far. Hey cats, we're smack bang in the middle of 2021 already. It's time for a mid-year checkup on what are my top five running shoe pickups of 2021. Please note I've included shoes here that I own, I've purchased, and also shoes that I've run a number of miles in. In fact, I think these are some of the shoes I've run the most miles in over the years so far. All the shoes featured today I've been using in training for time trials or races. And also these are shoes that have only been released in 2021, so there won't be anything from 2020. Everybody got that? Okay, let's go. First shoe up today is the Adidas Adi Zero Adios 6. So the Adios 6 is absolutely worth the place on the list today. From a pace perspective, the absolutely sublime balance between upper fit, firmer rear cushion from the long lasting Light Strike and four foot fast facilitating Light Strike Pro really makes this one quite a special pickup. I think I'm closing on about 70 miles in it already, which just goes to show how short a time I've had the shoe and I really enjoy it so much I'm just getting out there as often as I can in it. I also love the shoe aesthetically from those suede hits in the toe guard. It almost looks like a old Adidas football boot to me. The World Cup or the Copa Mundial. Just the whole thing reminds me of running shoes long past. The Adios 6 for me performs well on seven mile efforts around about 11.27 kilometers through to interval sessions or even on the long run as well. And just as great if I want to run some recovery miles, some easy miles, it still feels good. It's certainly up there in terms of the most versatile running shoes released so far. No plate here, aside from that torsion system they've included. And I think at 110 earth credits UK, it's unmatched in what it offers within that price range. A real winner from the three stripe brand. Another winner thus far in 2021, is the Puma Liberate Nitro. Super light and fitting to the foot. I think it's a great deal more versatile than the feline footwear manufacturer has led us to believe. That upper fit really is superb. It just hugs the foot and it doesn't get too warm either. The mesh looks a little bit thicker than perhaps it actually appears when you get it in hand. I really do find that nitro midsole material perfect in terms of height for a variety of different run types. Shorter, easy three mile efforts all long runs past 12 or 13 miles at nice sustainable paces are no problem for this one. A few people reckoned it was a bit lacking in terms of midsole, but I haven't ever found that really. It's a staple as well for those five kilometer interval sessions where you're doing one kilometer at your race pace. Absolute winner. Wet or dry conditions are catered for with the underside Puma grip. Those protrusions know what they're doing. A little bit like Steven Seagal in an action movie. Right, it's bags of value to be had here at around about 90 Earth credits UK. And you can pick them up a lot cheaper than that when Puma have a sale, which they seem to have almost permanently. A trainer and racer option of real quality for 2021. Still smells pretty good as well. To partner the Adios 6 in the top five today is the new energy rod equipped Adios Pro 2. Recently, my new 10K race PB shoe the Adios Pro 2 is a real improvement on the first version, a much more flexible upper, which fits your foot like a glove. The German brand has managed to relieve the weight somewhat from the original version. They've chopped out some of the midsole and refined the shoe even more, making sure that, that Light Strike Pro foam is only underfoot and not around the foot now. A minimum of the excess foam here and a maximum firm. It's kind of like they got the blueprint of the first shoe and they almost had it right and they just chopped out a few pieces here and there, made a couple of really important changes and it's all the better for it. Everything feels a little stripped down now and the benefits are there to be had for the runner. I found it just as stable as the V1 at pace. I'm not sure this is a shoe you want to run slowly in. Why would you want to waste it for that? I just feel compelled now looking at it to get it on foot once again. I can't wait for another endorphin enabling fast pace adventure into pace paradise and the Adios Pro 2. Yes, it's a little tasty on price, I will give you that, but in my honest opinion, worth every penny that I spent on it. If you can find it, I recommend you hire the Adios Pro 2. The fourth shoe on my no particular order list is the Pegasus Trail 3 from Nike. You weren't expecting that, were you? Yes, a Nike shoe and one I find of great value. If you're looking for an everyday shoe for road and trail use, 
I think it's a winner. My typical trails are a real mix of damp forest dirt, dusty gravel paths, and saturated soil and grass. The Trail 3's been ideal across all those different terrains, and it's got an attractive price to it. I think it's an attractive shoe as well. I really like the looks of it. Yeah, some people might say the upper's a touch bulky, but I'm not really too fussed about that when I'm out on those trails, more to protect the foot. I think it does a good job of foot fortification. And most folks out there don't have loads of earth credits to spare to fork out on various different trail shoes for each different terrain. I think this one's a good all-rounder. I think it covers pretty much every eventuality. I mean, I even run through a flood in this the other day and it was fine. After it dried out, it took a while to dry out, in fairness. I think at around about 115 earth credits, the Trail 3 represents pretty decent value and it's one of my top picks of 2021 so far. I think it just ticks a lot of boxes at a very appropriate price. Comfortable cushion and enough protection for most trail runners needs. Especially perhaps if you're one that doesn't frequent the trails as often as others. So the Pegasus Trail 3 is my fourth shoe. Last shoe in the five alive selection in today's video is the New Balance Fuel Cell Rebel 2. 125 smackaroonies is the price on this one. And I have to say it does take whatever I throw at it. I think if you're a neutral runner that doesn't have any problems with stability, the Rebel 2 could be right up your street. Super light and I've taken it on anything from easy 5k runs back from work, hard 10 by 400 meter repeat sessions, even long runs up to the half marathon distance, and just about everything in between the Rebel 2 has stood up to the task. A little bit like Billy Ocean in a shoe. When the going gets tough, yeah, you know the rest. Fit is superb, if a little short, so don't be caught out. Durability doesn't appear to be an issue in the outsole thus far, and the outsole traction performs better than its bigger brother, the RC Elite version 2. The upper is simple. The weight is low, and it's a vastly more versatile shoe than the original version of the Rebel. One of the best in 2021 so far, in my honest opinion, and a shoe that will benefit any runner's rotation. I think it'll fit in somewhere for just about everybody, this one. Very few negatives to this one, just make sure you get that sizing right to avoid those return tears. And you can really harness the potential of the Rebel too. Okay. So in no particular order, those are my top five pickups for 2021 so far. Let me know what your favourite shoes have been thus far down in the comments. A quick musical interlude for you. I'm not sure what it is recently, but what with the happenings in the Euros, Skinner and Badil, the Lightning Seeds, all that, I've been dipping back into the 90s. And I've kind of reached the end now of the 90s and got to the noughties. And I realised that Richard Ashcroft's Alone With Everyone album was released 21 years ago. 21 years. How has that happened? There's some fantastic tunes on here. The intro track is a blueprint for pretty much all of his work that came after this album. A Song for the Lovers has got quite a driving guitar riff in there and quite a lot of pace as well. It mixes lots of genres together and it's very much exactly what Richard Ashcroft's been doing for the last 21 years. I really like You On My Mind In My Sleep as well. A really fantastic song. There's some really beautiful pedal steel at work on this album. Not entirely sure who's playing on it. Yeah, just checked in there. It's actually BJ Cole, very famous pedal steel player, played on so many albums. It's unreal. You can't name all of them. Come on, people, we're making it now is also a great track. A good album to check out if you've never heard of him before. Richard Ashcroft. It's called Alone with Everybody. Oh, I'm just about all tuckered out. I think I've given all I can muster. Thanks for tuning in guys, if you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications of when I launch those new videos for you. It really does help the channel out too if you give this video a thumbs up like and share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.